Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you in a new episode about Lamp Graph Introduction Series. So today we are talking about subgraphs and how you can construct more complex system to perform what you need. And quick note, there is a link to Amazon website in the description, so please click on it and then when you buy something somewhere, Amazon will reward me and provide a couple of cents, so I will be closer to my dream a new keyboard. All right, thanks a lot, and now let's jump into the coding session. All right, so basically why would you need subgraphs in general? Uh, well, it's a very useful feature when you are building multi-agent systems. And practically, uh, in LangGraph there are two ways how you can utilize subgraphs, and this is, uh, you can register subgraph as a node, and this is the example, it's very simple. Or you can directly invoke uh, the subgraph from a node, from the parent node. And also, this is something you know already, right? So this is pretty straightforward and simple, but there are some smaller things you need to know when you're doing this. And today we're going to check the first way. So we're going to register subgraph as a node. And um, what we are going to do, we are going to extend the example from the previous lesson. And let me show it to you. So it was this one, it was a kind of uh, answering machine agent uh, which collected different information from different sources, the dynamic one from the web and the more fundamental static one from Wikipedia. And today we're going to extend this example and try to build subgraphs. So what we are doing today, let me compile this first, some basic stuff here. So this is our idea and uh, let me make it a bit smaller so you can see it. So what do we have? We would uh, create a query classification and why would we need that? Uh, this is because we would like our web search and Wikipedia search uh, produce more precise results. So we're going to classify the query so we can point and the, move the search in the direction of this specific category. right? Uh, so we have this uh, node in our basic uh, bigger graph, then we have two subgraphs. One is responsible for web searching and another is wiki search. And inside the graph, we are going to rewrite the user query because uh, it's a normal human language uh, which we get from the user, but we would like to convert it to a very specific thing, like for the Wikipedia, it's probably uh, not the best way to ask you questions or for the verb search as well. So we're going to convert it to uh, optimize the search for a specific platform, and then we perform the searching in these platforms, and then we return in again the list of documents. And using these documents, we are going to generate an answer. And here we are operating, this is our schema kind of, we have a question, uh, we have a classification which comes from query classification not and we have a list of documents and this is the result of work of these two graphs, subgraphs in this case. And then based on this list, the generate answer node would provide us an answer. So this is the raw idea of what we are doing today. Right. And uh, so let's take a look what we have here. And first, let's start from the uh, optimized verb search graph from this uh, left-hand side, left side guy. Uh, what do we have here? And it's very interesting. Uh, we are defining our subgraph state. It's a specific one. And take a look at that. We have a question, classification, uh, because uh, based on this two, we produce something. Then we have an optimized web request. And this is for our inner usage. It's not visible to the outside of the world. And then we produce a list of documents. And what might be not clear for you, and I'm not going to touch this for some time, why question and classification are lists of strings. And this is something just take, let's take it as it is, and I will explain a bit later for you why it's like that, right? Uh, so what do we have here? We have two nodes. Practically, we do the optimization of request. And what we are doing here, we just uh, saying that, okay, um, that again, at this point, we are working on this guy. So this guy gets the question and classification. For example, this is financial area, financial area or something, like I'm going to ask again about investing in the ice stocks this time. And so you have this uh, category, like financial area again, and user request, and then we are trying to convert the a user request to the form that it's more suitable for performing web search. And we do have a lot of rules here, and uh, I'm not going to read it through, just uh, you can take it, take a look at that and check it after uh, 
Uh, this is in the Git repository. I'm providing a link as well. And uh, so we have this uh, human message, uh, the category, this is the first list, uh, the first element of the list and the user request, the same, the first list, then we uh, invoke in our LLM, provide a system message and human message, and at the end we have this optimized web search request. And then based on this one, we have the real search, we grab the optimized uh, web search here, right, and we invoke in using Tavily, and again, uh, it needs it, it wants to provide you an API key and you have to request it, otherwise it won't work for you. And we do some clever stuff like we are filtering uh, pages that are not accessible for us for some reasons, right? And we are saving the results as a list of documents, uh, so we, we are interested in the content here and we are also saving the URL, the source of the document as well, and providing this list back to the caller. And then we compile our graph and let me show it to you. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, one direction thing. It's optimizing request and it performs the search in the web for optimized request. And this is an example, like should I invest in AI stocks now? Just let's give it a try and so double check that everything works fine, right? And classification is its investment advice. And again, this will be given in the future from the parent graph, right? That's the idea. And take a look at that. Uh, what do we have here? We have a question, should I invest in AI stocks now? And optimized web request is a bit different, right? Is investing in AI stocks now requires us analy uh, analysis of current market trends, company performance, potential risks, etc. It's a pretty long one, pretty lengthy. And we do have a list of uh, web documents with, with, with some articles regarding our optimized web request. So it seems it, it, it's working, right? Uh, let's switch to the second subgraph, and this one is about Wikipedia. It's exactly the same idea, so I'm probably going to go through it a bit quicker this time. The same, we have our own state for this subgraph, and the same as a question, classification as lists, which looks a bit weird at the moment, but again, I will explain later why, why do we have like that. And we, again, the same idea, we have optimized structured Wikipedia request and uh, the list of resulting documents. And the same system message, but a bit different. It's uh, fine-tuned for specifically for Wikipedia articles, and it forces the LLM to produce, to process the original human um, language request to some specific for Wikipedia. And again, we have the category and we have user requests, and then we are generating it with LLM, uh, the thing which is called optimized structured Wikipedia. And the second note here, we, we do the real search, and this is exactly from the previous lesson. Uh, we make a search using Wikipedia Loader, and we provide a list of documents from there, like content and, again, source as well. And we turn this into a list of documents. And it's the same structure as the previous one, and you can see it's, again, optimized request, search Wikipedia, and, and, and if I give it a try for the same question, should I invest in AI stocks now, and the same category or classification, so then we can see the result. And again, the original question was pretty human, uh, constructed pretty human way, right? And optimized structured Wikipedia was investment in AI stocks, market trends, and historical context. And we do have a list of articles from Wikipedia. And okay, it seems everything works smoothly, right, as expected. And let's then switch to the entire graph, to the bigger graph, the parent graph, finally. And again, uh, what do we have here? We have our own state. And this one, that's, uh, well, it's time to talk about why uh, do we have lists for question call classification. And for that, let me scroll up to the initial uh, image here. So the way uh, what we have for documents, it's clear. We have this annotated uh, thing, right? We are using reducer here because we have list of documents from web search and we have list of documents from wiki search. And here we are updating states at the same time and we need to have reducing mechanism somehow to decide how to process uh, these concurrent updates for the same thing, for the same key documents. And using reducer we're just adding documents uh, on top, so we are generating a list contain that contains both from here documents and from there. Right? But what happens with question and classification? We are generating, we have a question uh, from the start, right? And query classification provides us a classification key. And then we set these two uh, to the subgraphs. And they are working on the information, providing this list of documents, and everything is fine. So why do we need to update this one? 
because uh, the problem here what's happening question and classification are also being updated and this is very weird situation strange right because uh, we saw the code neither of them are updating the question and classification strings but this is the, this is the thing right since we are returning from the subgraphs these two keys and they come in here they also need to be updated and this is the question how we should do it again exactly the same problem we have to solve right and for doing that uh, we can well there is only one single way in one graph at the moment you have to use this annotated preprocessor and uh, reducer so what we have here where is our overall state so in overall state, uh, we do have annotated and operator add reducer for documents. That's clear why. But again, we have the question, which is the same. Like we know this is the same, but not, graph doesn't know that. And classification from two sub uh, graphs. And long graph needs to do something with that. So what we are saying, okay, then it's a list and we do have reducing mechanism here. That's why we have list, guys. This is the only reason here. So even again, even if we don't update question and classification, they are both coming from two subgraphs and one graph tries to update it. That's why we have annotated here as well. And since this is a list, we have to set lists here. And that's the reason. Okay. All right, hope it's clear for you now. All right, what do we have here? And the answer is just a string because um, we are not modifying answer in our subgraphs. This is the result of the work, the latest, not in the system. And uh, we have this query classification. This is another LLM call. And uh, again, we are just trying to set it up properly. So please provide for us a category or classification. Uh, we invoke the LLM and then we have the classification back. And for generating the answer, we have a system message. So again, at this time, we have a list of documents which we can operate with. And we are asking uh, AI Assistant to take a look at the documents. And we are providing them here in the uh, bullet point list. And uh, again, this, is part, this part came from the previous lesson. You can take a look at that lesson and uh, check if you are interested in detailed information about that, right? And uh, then we are providing back the answer and practically that that's it right the only maybe difference we are trying we're asking here to provide a source as well if some document was used for generating answer we ask okay please provide included source url so reader can check it and for more information for example and uh, then this is the technique i mentioned initially we have a node and uh, we are just building the subgraph here we're compiling it and provide it as a node implementation and i'm compiling it and what we have here take a look we have a beautiful bigger graph which contains two subgraphs and this too we saw already we checked it already it worked fine and it's time to give it a try right for the whole bigger thing so it's pretty simple. Uh, it's a uh, graph invoke question. Should I invest in Tesla stocks? No, in AI stocks, sorry. Not Tesla, AI stocks, AI stocks. And this is a list and you know why it's a list, right? Uh, because of these things with updating from information from some graphs. So I'm running it. And here we are, we have the response back uh, as a state from the graph execution and take a look we have these questions three time and this is correct because uh, well it comes here we have it the first time then we have uh, this execution that one and then it was uh, added to the list so we have it three times and the same for classification and this is intentional uh, we know about that it's not intentional but this is the way how it works and then we have list of documents and this one contains also the information from two subgraphs so we have the list of web documents or so web pages articles and we do have list of wikipedia articles here and we have an answer in a single form and if we would take a deeper look at that take a look we have a pretty lengthy explanation as an answering us the question including the links where you can grab some additional information if you want to all right, that was it for today's video. And again, traditionally, I welcome, I thank you for sticking with me till the end of this video. I really appreciate that. And 
stay in touch because in the next video we will try another technique it's it's even more interesting because uh we will be building nodes without even knowing how many of them we need so it's a very unpredictable way it's called well in general it's pretty easy technique it's map reducing but we will take a look at some examples so it will be really interesting material and it was me evgeny thanks again uh stay tuned and i see you next time in the next video bye bye